to help you with your first extra credit or and also um, for your semester project um, so the first extra credit is the first part of the semester project which is significant because you are sampling your data that you're going to be using for the rest of your project okay so you want to do this properly and that's why it's also good to basically do this for the extra credit because then you can get feedback for your project so instructions um you are well here's the instructions you have these three tabs here instructions of what to do um example of how to do it and data sets that you're going to use as your quote unquote populations so um obviously the first thing to do is read this you have uh, wow you're going to do a systematic sampling method and i spoke about that last week so you're making a systematic sample but we're telling you how to start it and how to basically how, you know find your nth value okay um so let's go to example okay let's read this for a second to create your systematic sample you will use your birth month number so my birth month is may and th therefore that's five right so i was born in the month of five in may as your starting place in the set you choose and your birth date my birth date is six so that will be my nth value um, to basically find my systematic sample. Um, for example, um, sorry, this is cut off a little bit. Let me change that. Okay, better. All right, so I mean, I'll do the example with my birthday, but this is another example that you can use. If Quinn was born on June 23rd, he would use six for the starting value and then 23 for the nth value and count every 23 23rd value 23rd value from there to get to the rest of his data set so here i'm going to show you with my birthday okay so when you click on data sets you'll get all these different data sets that you can choose from so you pick one okay um i picked this one i don't know i clicked on oh wait where is it let's say that i picked i picked this one I picked um, the 2013 average annual number for melanoma. It doesn't matter which one you pick. But once you click on one of these, you'll get a population. So this is considered my population. This is not my sample. This is the population that I'm going to systematically sample from, okay? So my birthday is May 6th. And so my birth month is five. And my birth day is six, month day. So what this is saying is when I'm going to sample my... Uh, or create my systematic sample. I'm going to list my values here. Um, I'm going to start, always start in the first row. But you're going to determine where in the first row you're starting by your birth month. So because my birth month is May, which is the fifth month, I'm going to start in the fifth column, first row. So my first data value in my data set is 37. Okay, first part of my sample. Now, um, my birthday is six. So six is my nth value. So now I'm gonna count every sixth data value to get to the rest of my systematic sample. So from my starting point, I go one, two, three, four, five, six. This is my next data value. I go one, go to the next line. Two, three, four, five, six. Here's my next value, 97. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's my next value. And I'm writing them down as I go. Um, which I suggest you do, or you could do it after. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like I have a pattern, and you might find one with yours. And it looks like, I'm just going to circle all these. <laughs> it looks like all of these are going to go into my systematic sample. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, you may or may not have this type of, you know, um, pattern that happens, but I did. Lucky me. However, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I only have 17 values and I need 35, okay? You have to have 35 values for your data set. Have to have 35. So um, this might depend on your professor as well. Um, some 
of your professors might have an issue with you going and, and counting from here, one, and then starting over at the beginning, one, two, three, four, five, six, because you can imagine if I were to do that, I would repeat these values again, and that's just based on my birthday and the pattern that happened there. So to avoid that, let me go back to my instructions, okay, back to the example, this is how I would what we call wrap around. So if I don't get the 35 required data values, um, once I get to this point, right, what do I do? Um, I wrap around in this way. So if the last number was in column two, row nine, my next value would be in column nine, row two. So let me show you that with uh, my example. Um, uh, I guess I could write it here. I'll circle it with pink, I'll color coordinate. So my last value is in um, column and then row. My last value is in, I'll write that here, is in column five, row nine. So to wrap around, my next one is going to be in column nine, row five. So column nine, row five, row five, column nine. Now I'm gonna keep going from here. Okay, and then count every sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then keep going from there. Until I get to 35 values, that's what I'm gonna keep doing, okay? So again, once you, once you have your, so start in row, row one, right? Start in row one to determine the column that you start with is your birth month. So mine is five. Your birth month is going to change. If you're born in January, you're starting here. If you're born in February, if you're born in March, April, May, June, July, right? Um, and then to determine your nth value for your systematic sampling method, from that starting point, you're counting every whatever birthday you are. In my case, every sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're born on the 30th, you have to count every 30. And I'm sorry, I didn't make this up, but that is what <laughs> you need to do. If you have a situation like I did where I go to the end and I did not make my 35 values and I have to keep going or wrap around, right? If I were to wrap around from here, my pattern would go right back to this one and I would just have repetition of all these values. So to avoid that, that's why you have this portion, this instruction here. And I'm, I would suggest that you ver just ask your professor what they prefer or if they care. Um, as to whether or not you can continue from here and, and just wrap around to row one or if they want you to follow this instruction here, okay? Because sometimes I find that if I wrap, wrap around that way, it works and, if I, if, and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes when I wrap around from here directly to row one, it's just gonna continue to give me the same values, which is not a great sample. So um, as you go through your sampling process, just ver just double check with your professor. That's why doing the extra credit is, is important too. Verify with your professor as to which method they prefer, if they prefer one or the other, okay? Just double check or if they care, okay? I usually tell my students, if you have this pattern, um, if I were to start here and it goes back here to the same numbers, I would prefer you to follow this because of the fact that it would create a better sample. Um, some of you can start here and keep counting and you won't have repetition and therefore I wouldn't, you know, that um, is okay to me, but verify with your professor. But the important part of um, this extra credit is not only are you sampling this, this um, sample systematically, but you also have to write your, what you did word by word, word by word, but write what you did such that anyone reading um, what you write can create the same sample that you created. So you have to spe be specific on where you're starting, be specific on how you're counting, be specific how you're wrapping around so that anyone can create the same sample that you have. I like to see the, um, where is it? Uh, sorry, I like to see the population and I like to see the color coordination, I like to see that. And then I like to see the sample listed, hopefully in, um, in sorted form, which you can do on your calculator. Actually, I will show you that really quick right now as well. Let's assume that, and I'm just gonna use this little bit, 37, right? You're gonna input, and actually, my suggestion is to input when you're doing this into L5, because you're gonna use this list throughout the semester and you don't wanna continue to use, um, to input 
35 values into your data set or into your into your calculator okay so once you're doing these 35 values do them in L5 so you could just leave them in your calculator because you're going to use them later on but if I have my list in L5 and I want it sorted from least to greatest my calculator will do that for me you're going to go to sat sort a which is number two here and I have to tell it which list I wanted to sort and I put my values in L5 so on top of the number five you see L5 in blue so you'd have to press second and then five to get L5 enter and then when I go back to my list when I go back to stat and edit you will see them in order from least to greatest okay and you can use that to list your sample because you want to list your sample as well in order from least to greatest. So I hope that helps um, with your extra credit one or if you're not doing extra credit one, this is how you sample for your semester project. It's a systematic sampling method.